I know the video quality isn't the greatest, but try to listen to what I'm saying. I'm saving you years of research. A lot of these other people will tell you that something is Freemasonic. And trust me, it's another secret society, yes, but it's not necessarily Freemasonry. They might be similar, secret meetings, secret handshakes, or signs, but it's not the same group. If it was, this would all be easy. But it's more complicated than that. People want to say Illuminati. This just means enlightened person. Or Bavarian Illuminati, which is an old group that doesn't even exist anymore. You have the Bilderbergs, yeah. And the CFR, yeah. And the UN, yeah. But the real power groups, the real stuff, doesn't even have a name. That's how secret it is. It's not the Rockefellers, the Rothschilds, the Queen of England, or anyone else that everyone in the world has heard of. It's someone we'll never know, because they don't want us to know. Maybe it's something we'll never know, a force that we just have to deal with, keep showing up in the guises and forms of many different people. But it doesn't matter who, it's just going to keep showing up. Like a glitch in the computer code, it's not that Lucifer or the vampire has to ask for permission first. It's that it's a glitch in the matrix, a computer error, coding gone wrong. Scientists have recently said that they feel the universe appears to have a computer code, which ties into the crazy theory that Earth is under some sort of magic spell or contact from a demonic force or planet or extraterrestrial alien that prefers to communicate in digital binary code. And that attempts to build a supercomputer such as the CERN are an attempt to open portholes, to open other dimensions that evil demonic forces reside. If you're a psychiatrist or, and, and, and are hearing this, understand, whether it's real or not, they believe they are in contact with these entities and are being directed by them. That's why they're so evil. And the entities are telling them eternal life, total power, total control, everything you could ever want. Just kill everyone. Set up a world government. Build this design we're telling you. Build what we're telling you. Build this. Build this. Let us through. Build the Hadron Collider. Open the dimensions. Let us in. We're going to really help you. We're friendly little guys. Demons? Aliens? Don't exist? I don't know. I only cover what I can prove. But now, I'm telling you, one of the big secrets of the elite, okay? Now, I found this picture on Facebook, and it's quite interesting. Okay, to me, this represents ISIS, of one of the representations of many different things. A long memory means must have a long past. An evil streak? This is blatant, direct statement. The evil religions throughout history. And patience? Which means it's slowly been building up. Over time. Piece by piece. When you're a hunter, you get everything in place first. You set your trap, and then you wait. And you don't make yourself known to your prey until it's too late for them. And then you pounce on them with a spear. Isis, Mystery Babylon. She seems to be coming back. Notice there's no mention of a heavenly mother in the Bible. Jesus even rebukes his mother and his sisters at one point. And yet the Catholic Church, against the Bible, has continued to pray to and worship the divine feminine. I'm going to tell you, as a religious history scholar, what I think is going on in the state of world of affairs today. There have been various groups that have rose to power over the centuries, and they've all fallen and been replaced by others. Hundreds and hundreds of revolutions have taken place in Africa, Europe, Asia, the Middle East, even America. Sometimes these groups as it says, have a memory and plot to come back in control. Most of the time, they don't succeed. This power throughout history has been rather limited and consolidated, able to be collected in books, 
however accurate or inaccurate they may be. One of these groups is the ancient cult of the divine female. It seems to be more of a force rather than an actual group of humans. Perhaps it's related to Carl Jung's theory of the collective unconscious. We're all familiar with the idea of demon possession, even if we don't believe in it. Perhaps the person is in a certain state of mind. Might be a better way of saying it. But whatever it's called, psychopath, sociopath, some people, in a poetic sense, are just demon-possessed. And while we mention demon possession, no one ever hardly mentions angelic possession. No, not that I'm saying that exists either, but certainly we've all met people that just have an unearthly sense of happiness, always chipper and happy, positive. And this could be seen as a blessing or angelic possession, yeah, just being in a good mood, whereas demon possession is being in a bad mood. The idea of this, good, bad, positive, negative, is reminiscent of the religious idea known as duality. Two, yin-yang. And while we understand this to be the way the world works, it could be said that this is also a mode of thinking, what some would call a thought implant, the idea of polar opposites. While we may see that in how the world works, such as tree branches above, tree roots below, everything is not black and white. There are many shades of the rainbow in between. And yet, it's been useful for electronics and electricity, this idea. The Saturnian model of the atom was used to help explain the workings of a molecule. Now, electronics play a huge role in everyday life. And while it may be useful to have learned this knowledge, we could also remember that it was demons who are thought to have taught the art of metallurgy and weapon making to mankind. There seems to be a connection to knowledge and demons. The tree of knowledge in the Garden of Eden, Prometheus given the knowledge of fire to humans. Knowledge always seems to come at a price, causing harm or destruction of some kind. But the call to the females is this. It wants back. The Saturn cult has a great deal of power, even now. But as I've said, there seems to be more than just one power force vying for ultimate control. And perhaps it's better thought of in astrological terms, where these forces are represented by planets, and none have ultimate soul control but they all influence one's life in different ways, all at the same time. The planets, represented by Greek gods, represented by forces of nature and the universe, represented by angels and the demons, it's all the same. Different levels of understanding. It plays out on different levels. For example, things change the look depending on how close or how far away you're looking at it, or if you just move to the left, or move to the right, or you go around it. The front doesn't look like the back. The inside of the car looks different than the outside. These things, when things seem odd, but you just can't quite put your finger on it, sometimes it may be nothing, but sometimes it does. And you ignoring them or overlooking them, too busy, is what the elite count on. As Bill Cooper once said, it doesn't matter if you believe it or not. What's important is that other people do believe it. And it's the other important people that happen to believe in this stuff. That's what matters, because they're ruling the world. So it's good to know this, to know that they, the elite, the rulers of the world, are thinking truly behind the scenes, 
behind your back. While certain people portray Saturn as representing the number three, and numerically it could, it is also the number of Jupiter. And such movies as Jupiter Ascendant, played by the part of a female, need to not be ignored. Jupiter, the female played by Milo Kunis, is ascending, rise of the female power. As I said, pussy power, as the feminists say. Women's lib in the 60s. Even part of our original reason for going to Iraq was supposedly to liberate women who were being horribly mistreated. But what's also important is that according to Greek mythology, Jupiter is to return to the throne. The Jewish people, according to the Bible, have gone astray at various times in history, instead worshiping the planet Saturn. Research into the El Saturn Phoenician movement will turn up a whole history which delves into the works of Blavatsky and others of the New Age Theosophist movement. It appears to me that many of these stories we see in the news are groups fighting for control, but not necessarily the groups they tell us they are. Acts can be attributed to anonymous or Islamic groups easily, with no way for the American public to verify that's the group that really did it. Cover stories can be created to cover up the truth and can even allow for the situation to be manipulated for political means. The number three, while connected to Saturn, almost appears to be a calling card of attack on Saturn by Jupiter or Jovian forces. I could be wrong because there's so much disinfo put out there to create confusion and distraction from the truth. But back to the Brussels logo, Bill of the OCS101ARC.com pointed out a while back the German Wings airplane crash, the transfer from a color logo to a black logo, appears to be indicative of a certain energy either being activated or, more likely, deactivated. Hence the blackness of death, burnt, dead. Again, the cover story is that it's a remembrance of the tragedy. But it could also be a calling card to those in the know, much like during a war when soldiers would kill people and leave a joker card behind. The search for three men seems to be indicating that the three men were responsible. But if three is a code for a group, say Jupiter, then it becomes the three men, the Jupiter men. The Jupiter group did it. Sounds silly and far-fetched, I know. Perhaps so. But something is going on with these events. I don't know quite what. It's hard to know what's the truth in a world that's backwards and upside down, as the Bible says. But it's a tragedy for any innocent lives to be lost. It's even more despicable if they were used just for a headline to signal a message. But message received. There's evil in the world. Evil exists, whatever you want to call it. The idea that one nation or group is responsible more than another is silly, wrong. It's within human potential to do terrible acts. But if any outside forces are affecting humankind and influencing their decisions, we could be in trouble, and apparently are. How to win a war that's not against flesh, but against powers of evil spirituality, as the Bible says? I don't know. But the first step, they say, is admitting there is a problem. Just update before I upload this. Brussels attacks. 
two suspects named, two brothers. Now, again, if you know anything about occult history or religion even, we're talking about the religions of the Middle East, two brothers is very significant as well. Remember we talked about earlier about the duality? It's very prominent. And whether it's on purpose or not and orchestrated this way by humans, uh, you know, as a type of conspiracy, I don't know. It doesn't have to be. Like I said, uh, the collective unconscious, as Jung called it, where this is essentially the only story that there is to be played out over and over and over again. If you can find out what the story is, you might not be able to prevent it, but maybe put yourself in a safer spot like Noah did, right? Be a little art, protect yourself, protect your friends and family and loved ones. Try to tell others as you can, whether they believe you or not. It's not important. You tried. You did your best. All right. 144,978 views, but the 144,000... You know, if you just want to be all nutty numerology right now, because that'll change later. But right now, check it out. The chosen number. Woo! Representing the chosen people. Now, the Jehovah's Witnesses will take this as a literal 144,000. And me, I've argued that 144 is the product of 12 times 12. Again, if you understand how numerology works, this seems to imply that everyone eventually is on this path. That's how I like to look at it. Even those who are sinners and wretched through enough punishment, however it might be, or, you know, the Bible explains it, years of retribution or... However, salvation, but eventually, they all come around. Twelve times twelve mean, and all the people, all twelve tribes of Israel, come back and come saved. But who knows? Who am I, right? I'm just some nut rambling on YouTube Let's get this out there, because... Who knows? But by the time I upload this, there'll be some more shit figured out. 